a cylindrical vessel of radius 1 meter and height 3 meter is filled with water up to height 2 meter. Sounds great. So, the first thing is that we need to draw the image of this. All right. So, here and it is of radius 1 meter, right. So, just an indicative diagram. So, please do not scale it. So, this is that you know cylindrical volume. I would just like to draw the next one as well, so that you can just have a comparative view is filled. Okay, The radius is given as 1 meter, that is the radius is filled with water up to height 2 meter. That sounds great. Okay, And this cylinder is rotated about its vertical axis. So, it is a clear case where the shape of the free surface is going to be a paraboloid because in three dimension that parabolic line would be called as paraboloid and the angular speed is omega such that water just rises to the brim. That means it is going to be something like this. This is what it is going to be. Now, as I said, please do not scale the figure, but still if you want something like this, okay? because it, this level has to be lower than the original one. At least that much of sense I need to put. <laughs> right? Okay. Now, find the value of omega and even root 10 has been given. So, this is what we need to consider. So, let us see all of you must be knowing that the shape of the free surface here y comes out to be omega square x square by 2 g. Let me draw where do we measure the y and x. This is the origin and this point is x comma y. You get that? I have just magnified, I have just zoomed in the free surface. Now, just to calculate the value of omega, we need to work a little bit in volume. Let us say how much would be the volume of this paraboloid. Now, you know it does not make sense that someone memorizes the volume of the paraboloid. That does not make sense. So, it is better let us use our power of calculus. So, I can just assume this to be an elementary disk here. So, that would be at a distance x height y. So, how much would be the volume of that disk? Well, that is going to be pi x square multiplied by dy is this one, right? And that is the elementary volume. Uh, Let us write it as dv and that is going to be pi x square dy. That is omega square into 2x divided by 2g multiplied by dx. That is a volume of this small disk. If I would like to calculate the total volume, I need to integrate it and the limit of x would go from 0 to 1. So, let me call this as v1, the volume of this paraboloid. So, the critical expression is this. If you do not remember, then again you are going to waste pretty much of time. Now, rest I think it is very simple because uh, if I would say what is the total volume of the cylinder pi r square multiplied by 3, the total volume of the cylinder, right? So, that would be the total volume and that volume of the cylinder is volume of water plus volume of the paraboloid. So, pi r square multiplied by 2 plus of v1 which is here. I know a little bit of solving has to be done and when you solve this and uh, this ease has been given to you, the value of omega comes out to be 6.32 and when you represent it 06.32, this is how you are going to represent. It takes a little bit of calculation, I do agree, but you need to go. A beautiful one teaches you a lot of things. All right, question number 14. A hypothetical particle of mass m and charge minus 3q is revolving around a heavy particle of charge q. That is fine. So, I need to make a heavy particle first. So, here is that heavy particle and after that 
I need to go with the, the circumference. So, let me even draw that. Cool. Okay. Let me just slightly rearrange it. Makes sense. A bit of symmetrical one, right? So, as per the question, hypothetical particle of mass m and charge is minus 3 q is revolving around a heavy particle of charge q. Assume Bohr's model is applicable. That means the quantization principle. You need to calculate the orbital velocity of the particle. Okay, and you need to finally compare with this. So, let us see and then you need to comment on the value of n. Cool, that is not so difficult. This is the electrostatic force and that is 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught 3 q square divided by r square is m v square by r. That is the first equation, the electrostatic force providing the centripetal and after that n h by 2 pi that is equals to m v r because Bohr's model is applicable. So, these are the two equations, equations number one two equations number two and a little bit of solving the value of n you can easily you know uh, compare it and you would see the value of n comes as 15. So, 15.00 that would be the correct numeric value. How about 15th question? Cool, this is a bit good one. A conducting sphere of radius capital R is placed in a uniform electric field. The induced charge density on the surface, we know the charge would come only on the surface that sigma naught cos theta. If the electric force on the charges of same sign is this much, we need to calculate the value of lambda. Now, do not confuse, lambda is not the linear charge density. We are trained in that way. Lambda is a uh, numeric value. So, what do we require? The first thing we require is a figure, okay, the conductor here and it says, you know, if it is kept in a uniform electric field, the induced charge density is given by this expression sigma naught cos theta. So, if I say here at any angle theta, the polar angle is theta, that means the first and the fourth quadrant would be positive. Now, you need to understand that would make the entire right hemisphere that would be positive and the left hemisphere would be negative, right. And we need to calculate the force on the right hemisphere. Now, because this is a conductor, it is always recommended that you use the concept of electrostatic pressure and that electrostatic pressure is sigma square by 2 epsilon naught and that will give you the expression of force very easily. So, how come let us see, if I make a small ring here, if I make a ring here, da, 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 okay, there is the ring, okay. Now, this entire ring from the front to back has one charge density, right. So, how much would be the pressure there? sigma naught cos theta whole square divided by 2 epsilon naught, that is the pressure multiplied by the area, the area of this shaded ring. So, that is 2 pi, this is r. So, the radius of the ring is going to be r sin theta into this thickness right here, which is r d theta. So, what does it give me? This gives me the force on the entire hemisphere? No, only on the ring. But do you realize the force comes in this direction because that is exerted in the normal direction. So, if I want to calculate the total force exerted on the right hemisphere, you could see only a component of the force would be added. So, that component of the force therefore, a cos theta component is necessary just to show that this is the cos component which is getting added up. Now, this gives the expression of force and the integration limit will be 0 to pi by 2. Why? Because the elementary quantity is the ring. So, as theta increases from 0 to pi by 2, you know the ring, ring will 
cap the entire surface because a cap would be formed the cap all right and the hemisphere would be there from 0 to pi by 2. Now solving this should not be a trouble at this stage because cos cube theta sin theta that is a simple thing you can integrate by substitution when you solve this the value of lambda comes out to be 4 because the force will be pi r square sigma naught square by 4 epsilon naught. So your option is going to be 04.00.